Hey guys, how's it going? Mr Mitchell here. In this video we're going to look at the time constant for capacitors in RC circuits. So let's get started. Now it says here that as capacitors are often used in timing circuits, it is useful to have a variable called the time constant. So if the capacitor is charging, we define the time constant tau as the time taken to increase the charge stored to 63% of the difference between initial charge and full charge. Or if you know the capacitor is starting at 0 coulombs, then you can say it's the time taken to increase the charge stored to 63% of the full charge. If the capacitor is discharged, however, we define the time constant tau as the time taken for the capacitor to discharge to 37% of its initial charge, because once the capacitor has been charged it will have a maximum non-zero charge. So these two percentages are important to remember, 63% for the charging capacitor and 37% for the discharging capacitor. It then says that the time constant is given by this relationship here, tau equals r times c, where tau is the time constant measured in seconds, it's just a time, R is the resistance of the resistor in the RC circuit measured in ohms, and C is the capacitance of the capacitor in the RC circuit measured in farads. You should also note that in an RC circuit, an uncharged capacitor can be considered to be fully charged after a time approximately equal to 5 tau, i.e. 5 time constants. Similarly, a fully charged capacitor can be considered to be fully discharged after a time approximately equal to 5 tau. As well as determining the time constant from an equation, you could also be asked to determine the time constant from a graph. It says here that the time constant for an RC circuit can be determined graphically by considering the relationship between the charge and voltage across a capacitor. It then says at higher level, you saw that the charge on a capacitor is directly proportional to the potential difference or voltage across it. And this was shown with this graph here, so we have charge on the capacitor against potential difference across the capacitor, and you'll see that the two are directly proportional, so we have a straight line going through the origin. So this just means as one increases, the other one increases as well. And this means that we can use the potential difference instead of the charge to determine the time constant. And this is useful if you're given a graph of potential difference or voltage against time. So we have a couple of rules here for a graph of potential difference against time, and it says that for a charging capacitor that is initially uncharged, the time constant will equal the time it takes for the potential difference across it to reach 63% of its final value. Similarly, for a discharging capacitor, the time constant will equal the time it takes for the potential difference across it to reach 37% of its initial value. And lastly, it says to note that a large time constant means that a capacitor will charge or discharge slowly. So the larger the time constant, the more time it will take for a capacitor to charge or discharge. It's also worth pointing out that if you're given a graph of potential difference against time, and you're asked to work out the time constant, if it's a discharging graph, then it might remind you a bit like the half-life graphs from National Phi Physics, where you have an exponentially decreasing curve over time, and you can work out the time constant from your graph in the exact same way that you could work out the half-life from a graph of activity against time. But you can get an idea of how this is done in the worked example videos. That's all for this video folks, thanks for watching. If you made it to the end, I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.